Yeah. Hey everyone, thanks for hanging out. I know there's a, a keynote speaker coming up soon, so I appreciate you being here. Um, uh, yeah, so the, the presentation today is going to be on uh, Road Expert Mobile, and we're going to uh, do a quick overview of the solution and then try to get into uh, a demonstration of how to actually create a uh, Remote Expert Mobile client and uh, kick off an interaction with a contact center agent um, using that client. So I, I'm just curious how many people here know anything about Remote Expert Mobile? Has anyone heard of it or know what it does? God, what's that? Say that again? You said, who knows nothing? Oh, who knows? Uh, does anyone know any, anything about it? Yes. <laughs> Um, so we've got a couple people who have heard of it. Um, it's, it's probably worth mentioning, Darren. It's pretty new technology. Probably um, a lot of people haven't heard of. It. Yep. Yep. Joe. Joe was just saying it's it's a, a pretty new solution that Cisco's presenting. So um, it's it's totally understandable. A lot of people haven't heard of it. Um, but we'll try to give you a good orientation before we sure. dive into anything too uh, too deep. Um, so at a high level, uh, Remote Expert Mobile is a solution that's designed to enable web and mobile apps to uh, integrate into legacy SIP networks, such as Cisco Unified Communications, CCM, or Cisco Contact Center. Um, so, so bringing mobility into the uh, enterprise and contact center communication space. Um, it, is, uh, it is built on top of a WebRTC framework. So WebRTC is a... Um, Plug-inless real-time communication uh, framework that is uh, that has been taken up by Google Chrome and Firefox, and uh, hopefully soon Internet Explorer uh, will take it up as well. Um, so, so if you're using those technologies, you you don't need to download any kind of plugin to be able to do this uh, real-time voice and video calling. Um, Remote Expert Mobile also extends that voice and video calling capability and adds uh, some additional features around doing co-browsing. So, um, so an agent in a contact center uh, can, can co-browse and can view the same uh, mobile app or web page that a customer is, is using uh, in real time. And it also adds the ability to, um, to, to add a, a data channel to that call so that um, you can drive application events on the back end. Uh, you could use that data channel to do a simple text exchange, kind of like an IM uh, solution. Um, so that's, that's uh, Remote Expert Mobile in, 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 a, in a nutshell. Um, to get in a little bit deeper to look at some of the architecture involved, um, you, you see we've got the client application uh, on the left that runs the, um, the CSDK, and, and, uh, and then the two Remote Expert Mobile servers in the middle, the application server and the media broker, and then on the right, you see the enterprise uh, communications network. Um, the two main components uh, are the remote expert application server. Um, it is the core signaling component. It handles all of the uh, messaging between the clients and the, uh, the SIP network. Um, it, it hosts the client SDKs that we'll be working with today. Um, and it handles session provisioning and management. Um, so it's kind of the brains of the operation. So, so let's let's keep in mind, just like how Brad said, this is a, a web-based kind of architecture used for bringing new features into um, uh, websites, into a contact center environment. Uh, and, and, and if you don't know what that means, I don't blame you, because it's a rather very new technology. But if, if you've ever seen, for example, maybe the closest analogy might be something like if you're cruising on a, on a browser page somewhere, and after a while you get a click to chat, or you might even get a click to call, you might even get a click to, to the video. Uh, it's, it's the technology that allows that to happen, plus more. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's a good analogy. And there, and there are a few other companies out there that are offering similar solutions. Um, video uh, is, is one, and um, uh, TalkBox is kind of another WebRTC-based um, SDK. But, Really what differentiates uh, the Road Expert mobile solution is that it allows you to integrate into legacy contact center infrastructure. So there's no need for anyone to, to pull out and replace all of this great Cisco gear that they've, they've got on their network already. Um, so the other component uh, of, the, of the solution is the uh, media broker. And the media broker is what handles the, uh, the voice and video streams. It, uh, it can do transcoding from VP8 to H.264 video codec if, if needed. Um, uh, and, and it uh, decrypts the SRTP from the internet and converts it to RTP uh, on the internet. 
Um, so the CSDK handles all of the, or the, the remote expert application server handles all of the um, codec negotiation and media setup. So really as a, as a client developer for, for this solution, you'll, you'll never need to, um, to really think about the media broker at all. All of that setup is handled on the back end, so we won't talk too much about that today. Um, to take a closer look at the remote expert application server, um, there are a few services that run on the server side, again, kind of backend stuff that you'd never interact with directly as a developer. However, um, they're very important and they're kind of, I think, what makes this solution unique. Um, the, the first one is the, the web gateway service, and that's what handles the conversion of WebRTC to SIP signaling. Um, so that's what allows that's what allows these, these mobile clients and, and websites to actually integrate with you know, a 9971 or an EX60 desk phone that may be sitting on an agent's desk uh, in a contact center somewhere. Uh, so it's a very important component. The, the finesse gadgets are what enables an agent in a contact center to uh, co-browse with, with the customer. Uh, and it's embedded in a uh, in Cisco finesse, which is a, a contact center agent desktop. Um, and uh, the web console enables a non-contact center-enabled uh, agent to uh, also co-browse with a, with a customer on the web. Uh, the, the parts that we'll be digging into a little bit deeper today are the, the CSDK um, SDK and the Expert Assist SDK. Uh, the CSDK phone is, is a component uh, that uh, is the component that overlays the WebRTC framework and it simplifies the development of voice and video applications um, from, from, a, from a mobile client. Um, so, the, so the good news about the uh, CSDK phone is that's what makes it easy for you to write a phone in a browser, in a web-based environment. That's the part of the API that actually does all the phone, telephone type of features for you. Yeah, and, and we'll see when we, when we um, get into the code for the client that it's, um, it, it's a fairly simple to implement your own um, web-based video phone. Um, so the, the, other, the other element we'll be looking at is the applica uh, application event distribution API. And that's, um, and that's what enables us to add that data channel to the, to the voice and video call so that you can pass context back and forth. You can enable a, a richer experience for the, for the customer and the agent. Um, so basically, if, you know, when you call into a contact center, like Joe was saying earlier, um, and you've, you're, you're calling from a click to call button on a website, uh, and you get into the agent, and the agent has to ask you why you're calling, where you're coming from, you know, all of that kind of verification stuff um, can, can be bypassed using um, this, this AED uh, channel to pass context data into the agent so that when the call comes in, they already know who's calling and, and a little bit about why they're calling. So, so this is, I want to stress that this is really important to understand this AED uh, component because that's the value add to this thing. If you've ever seen this click to chat or click to call on a web browser, you know, they have some kind of rendition of the CSDK phone, but what they won't have is this application event distribution, which, you, which like Brad says, is kind of like a control channel between the two endpoints of the call so that you can actually send actions and behavior uh, from one end of the call to the other as data. That's, that's the first real important value add feature that we'll see here, and we'll see more coming up. And then the, um, so the other value add to just the voice and video is the, uh, the Expert Assist SDK. So the Expert Assist SDK is what enables you to, um, to co-browse. So it, it, it basically writes, um, it, it draws an application or a website to an HTML5 canvas that's running on an agent desktop and uh, the agent can push documents out to the customer, the agent can uh, fill out forms for the customer, um, and, and the agent can navigate the customer within the mobile application or the website that uh, is Expert Assist enabled. Okay, um, so, so I mentioned that this was really important to understand, but I want to really stress that this Expert Assist is going to be the coolest. I, I, I would venture to say most of the folks in this class hasn't, haven't seen this before. And when you see Brad's demo on how this works, it's the coolest. Um, so just a quick note on some supported browsers. It's at, at this point the technology supported on every major browser. Uh, Chrome and Firefox do not require a plugin. Uh, Opera, Internet Explorer, and Safari do. Um, 
And, and again, with mobile platforms, you know, iOS devices and Android devices are, uh, have their own SDKs. Um, today, we'll be looking at the code that's in the JavaScript SDK, so it's for the, uh, for the browser-based. Um, but, but separate SDKs exist for um, Objective-C for iOS and, and Java for the Android clients. Um, so, the, so the first way to, um, and the simplest way to, to generate this interaction is to use expert assist in what's called comprehensive mode. And this is a, a really simple and powerful way to get the solution up and running in a, in a short amount of time um, and, and to get kind of all of this functionality wrapped up in, in one little package. Um, basically what it does is it, um, with a single line of code, you can initiate a voice and video call to a contact center agent, um, and you can begin a co-browse session with that agent. Um, the, the comprehensive mode expert assist also uses the AD channels to be able to drive some application events, which we'll see. Um, we'll see when we walk through the demo. So here's just a slide showing uh, how simple it is to initiate uh, this, this interaction. Um, to, to generate a, an expert assist comprehensive mode call, you simply import the uh, assist.js script from your remote expert application server, and you issue the assist SDK start support uh, method, specifying a, a destination in the, um, uh, in, in the start support parameters, and that will be the, the number that it calls. Um, you can also exclude elements if, if, say, your web page has some sensitive customer specific information that you don't want the agents to be able to see, um, account numbers or bank balances or whatever, you can uh, enclose that element on the page in a, in a div titled assist no show as, as the class, and it will exclude that element from the screen sharing session uh, when that takes place. So, so just in case we have some folks that aren't too familiar with JavaScript, that's what this is. This is just a JavaScript line. But the way you're supposed to read that is, that's just a single line of code that I can put in a browser page, and every browser page, I put that single line of code in, I have all three of those features available to me. I have voice, video, and co-browse, and you'll see what co-browse is later. I have all those three features in any web page that I just drop this one line of code in. Then, and down here at the bottom, as Brad was explaining, are just options on how you want that to operate. Yep, so we'll, we'll start out with a the, with the demo now and we can actually see what that looks like. Um, the, the first demo is just gonna be uh, an expert assist comprehensive mode call. Um, and, and then next we'll get into kind of breaking that down into its um, unique components and, and why you might wanna do that. Um, so, uh, just to show anyone who may have never seen it, this is Cisco Finesse. This is a um, contact center agent desktop that is offered by Cisco. It's uh, browser-based and it runs uh, gadgets. Gadgets are basically any application that you would like to include in your agent desktop that you can, um, that you want to have access to, to contact center context data. So this, this, uh, this gadget right here is a co-browse gadget and it will enable this agent to view the customer's uh, web page when the customer makes a call in to the agent. So we've got just kind of a, a really simple demo app created here, and we'll kind of walk through some of the some of the code as we execute it. Um, again, as, as I mentioned before, that, that one line right there is what initiates this session, and all, all you really have to specify in there is the destination that you want to call. So for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a, a destination here. And you'll note that this is a, it's a, it's a full SIP URI. Um, so if, if we're going to be making a call into a contact center using all of the in-place SIP infrastructure, um, you want to include a, a fully formed SIP URI, including the, uh, the user and the host portion of, of the number you want to call. So we'll kick off the call, and I've, I've put a little breakpoint in here, just kind of showing that we're, that we're uh, issuing that assist SDK start support method. And we're sending the call to the destination, and our destination is going to be this um, this SIP URI. So the uh, the SDK initiates a pop-up window, which is it's a controller window. So it allows you to browse between web pages in the same domain and it, and, and maintain your co-browse and video session. And that um, controller window will prompt you for control of your voice and video uh, of your camera and your mic on your browser. So I'm going to allow that, and it's placing a call into my agent. I have an agent logged in right now to a uh, Jabber Windows client. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and answer that call. Um, 
And, and so the, the Assist SDK has um, created this, this div, this video window that floats over top of my page and, uh, and will contain the remote video with uh, showing the agent. Um, in our case, since I'm calling myself, there is no remote video um, because my camera can't be in two places at once. But this is the floating div that would contain the agent's uh, video in a production environment. Um, so you'll see at the same time now that Cisco, the Finesse desktop is updated. Um, you can see that the agent is now in a talking state and that the co-browse uh, functionality has been, the button has been enabled in the, in the co-browse gadget. Um, so if I want to start the co-browse, I click that. And so that the uh, co-browse gadget has used the AED uh, channel to be able to send a message over to the, um, to the, to the customer's browser uh, which has been configured to generate this alert asking the customer if they want to share their screen. Um, so I'll accept, I get a, a header notifying me that my screen is being shared, and uh, on the agent's uh, desktop here, on the agent's finesse desktop, you can see that I'm able to view the customer's browser. Um, I can also annotate the browser for them, I can make, I can make marks on it, and they show up over on this customer browser. I can clear them. Um, I can push documents out to them. We don't have any documents loaded in this lab, but um, you, can, you can push documents out, such as PDFs or image files to the customer if you, if you wanted to see them. Um, I can interact with elements on the customer's page, so I can, move, um, I can move elements on their page, such as the div here, move it out of the way. Um, and I can also co-fill out forms uh, with, with the customer, so I can, I can change the value in that um, in that text box. And you'll see the value updated here in the browser. Um, so that's a really valuable use case for uh, banks or um, uh, we've, you know, we've seen a lot of that when, when any, any uh, scenario in which a customer might have a complex form that they need to fill out and an agent would like to be able to help that customer uh, fill out that form with the correct values. Yeah, the, the typical we use, use case we get from customers for this kind of tool is for, uh, like Brad's saying, is for registration assistance. Somebody wants to sign up to a web page for whatever reason, um, and then they'll, they'll call into an agent. There will be a click to call button. They'll call into an agent. Then the agent can help them fill out that form, actually seeing that form um, on the agent side. So just a couple of highlights. Notice that this one video window that came up here, well, we, we don't see any video because of, of, of Brad's camera. But this video window is all a result of just that one line of code that we put in that web page. The whole notion of the fact that we made a call into Finesse, in addition to seeing um, uh, the, the, the customer's desktop, once again, is all just because of this one uh, line that we put in the, um, uh, the, 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 the web page on the customer side. So that's, the, that's kind of the most common use case to get people started. Um, there are some limitations with this expert assist comprehensive mode. Um, so what you gain in simplicity, you, you always lose a little bit in um, the ability to customize the solution. Uh, so, you know, for example, when you, when you use expert assist comprehensive, automatically as soon as the call is started, this pop-up window comes up. Um, there are some scenarios in which you may not want to have a pop-up window. Um, always with expert assist comprehensive mode, you have minimum ability to be able to customize this video window. So if you don't like the look or feel of it, or, you, uh, or you'd like to embed it rather than have it be floating, um, you, you have a, a kind of a, a reduced ability to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, so if you'd like to be able to have more customization in the way, the look and feel of the solution, you can uh, initialize each of these functions separately. Um, so going back to the um, the slides for a second to just review the different SDKs. We've got the CSDK, CSDK phone, the AD, and the um, expert assist, which are all separate. Um, and, and what we just saw with the comprehensive mode is it used all three of them in one easy line um, and, and brought them all up. But if we want to have more ability to customize the solution, then we can break them out into their separate components and, um, and, and have a little bit more ability to customize the way it looks and feels. So we'll go through to the next stage of the demo, um, which is uh, creating each of these uh, sessions individually and showing a little bit more about how you can customize the, the way they look and feel. Um, 
So if anyone was in the last session in here with Mike, he, he was talking a lot about JSONs. Um, this solution also uses JSON to, uh, to do session provisioning. So uh, to set up a session, you'll host a JSON to the remote expert application server, and it will respond to you with a JSON containing a token ID. Um, so the, the forming of the JSON is pretty important. It, it wants specific parameters to be passed, and, and the capabilities that the user has in that session are determined by the, uh, the JSON that you post to the server. Um, so, so for this example, we're going we're gonna to have a uh, user with voice and video capabilities, um, AED capabilities, and, and we're going to pass some uh, context data into the agent so that the agent can see where the customer was when they initiated the call. Um, so I've just kind of created this little form here to help illustrate the, the parameters that you're going to make a little bit better. Um, so there are some security features that you need to include in your JSON as well. The first one is the timeout value. So this, is, this value is how long you have to set up the session once you've, uh, once you've requested a session ID. And this is in minutes. It's configurable up to 60 minutes. Um, and then the second one is a web app ID that needs to be configured and matched with a web app ID that's uh, configured on the remote expert application server. The, the point of this, uh, this part of the exercise is to see how configurable the tool actually is. You saw how simple it is to use if you wanted to use it in its most simplistic form, but now you can see its configurability. Yep, so some of the stuff that you can configure in here that's, that's valuable for, again, passing context is you can configure the SIP user that's going to be sent in the from header of the SIP invite that goes out to um, the contact center agent. So this could typically be a, a customer's name. Um, and then you can also add UUI data, which can be an account number, let's say. So I'm going to generate the session request, and you can just see what the JSON looks like here. Um, so this is the, the JSON formed as you would want to post it to the web gateway, to the application server, um, to request a session token. So we'll go ahead and post it, and we'll walk through some code here and kind of see what's going on. Um, so, so in this example, I'm just using an AJAX call to post the uh, JSON to the web gateway. Um, and, and you can see I've got the, the, the JSON formed right here uh, under, available, uh, under a variable named get session request. And I'm posting that JSON to the web gateway um, in the data along with the post. So after you post it, there will be a uh, you'd set up a success callback, and if the uh, application server accepts the JSON and sets up your session, it'll respond to you with a session ID. And the session ID is this big, long, unreadable uh, string here, and that is an encoded session ID that contains um, a bunch of information that the client will need to use to be able to set up the session successfully, um, but that's all done again on the back end. And as the client uh, application developer. The only thing you need to do is to uh, take that session ID and extract it, um, and, and then you're going to pass it back to the uh, web gateway again. So once the, once the session response comes back successfully, I'm going to initialize another method that I call initialize UC. So this is where you actually are going to be establishing the session with the CSDK. Um, and before you start that session, uh, you, you may want to overwrite some of the, the methods that, uh, uh, that the session provides. Um, there is a callback method provided in the SDK for um, uninitialized. So when the session is successfully initialized, this callback will be triggered. Um, in this application, I am uh, changing the class of a few buttons to enable further functionality once the callback um, is triggered. You can also set up a method to, uh, to uh, alert you if the initialization fails. You, you can see how the configurability is helping us. Remember before, with just a single line of code, the thing either runs or it doesn't. But here, you can grab things like, well, what if it actually does fail to, to initialize? Or what if it actually does initialize? Maybe there's some things I only want to do on the page once I know that the, 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 the session's initialized. I've got that fine grain of control here um, if I take this more long-winded approach. <laughs> Um, yep, so once we've, once we've started the session, we do the, the UC, UC start, and that will um, set up our session with the, with the uh, remote expert ac application server. Um, at that point, since we did request voice and video capability, the CSDK will prompt us to control our camera and our microphone again, just like in the last one. So we'll allow that. Mm -hmm. 
Gut. Nope. And it's so we actually failed to initialize the session because I talked for longer than one minute, and, and we ex, and we exceeded the timeout value for that. Um, and so we'll I set it up again. With that. Sorry about that, Brad. <laughs> And you can see now we've, uh, we've enabled all of our buttons to continue to set up these uh, different functionalities independently of one another. Uh, so first I'll, I'll start an AED topic. Um, the AED interface is built on a uh, publisher subscriber model. So uh, if the topic does not exist and I, and I say to create a topic, um, I'll, I'll show you how to do that and then we can look at how you subscribe to the topic as well. So to, uh, to start an AED topic, you're going to uh, use the UC AED create topic method, and you're going to pass it the topic ID that you'd like to create. So this will be the name of the topic. If anyone else wants to subscribe to this topic, that's the name that they would also use to be able to uh, communicate over this data channel, essentially. Um, so again, much like with the UC uh, initialize method, there are uh, various callbacks in here that you can overwrite. Um, to, to customize your functionality within your application. Uh, you can generate events on topic success or on connect success. So when you successfully connect to the topic, you can um, pop up a message notifying the user that they've done that. Um, you can also set up, and this is an important one, uh, a callback for on message received. So whenever anyone else publishes a message to this topic, this callback will be triggered and you can do something like write that message to a text area if, if you wanted to uh, set up a kind of simple IM and, and text messaging application. Um, you can also trigger events within the application using this callback, and I'll kind of show you how we do that in a minute. So at this point, we've got a topic set up, um, but we're not talking to anyone. So we're just kind of sitting here with our own topic, and no one else has subscribed to it. So we need to. Uh, initiate a call into an agent so that the agent can subscribe to the topic and we can uh, communicate back and forth with him. So um, again, I will, I will have a, uh, the, the separate uh, SDK here, the separate functionality within the CSDK phone functionality. I'll, initi I'll initialize that now. Um, and, and again, to initialize that, you uh, create a call uh, using the UC phone create call method. And uh, you specify the number that you want to dial as the parameter that the, the create call method takes. So again, you can see the call is coming in, and this time the caller ID has the value that I, um, that I input in my JSON when I set up my session. And when we look over here, you can see that, the, again, my name has showed up in the call variables, and the account number has, is also available to finesse so that the agent can uh, look up your account information if, if, they, if they desire. So you can see we've, we've, got, uh, we, we've also generated this on message receive callback right here has, has been uh, kicked off. So um, we have a, a simple text chat app that's built that runs in Finesse that's able to use the AED channel to um, exchange text messages between the, the client and the agent. So if you ever wondered how click to chat works, that's how it works. This is pretty much it. <laughs> So you can see when I post a message uh, as the agent, I post a message to this chat window, um, and alerts generated on the customer's browser, and the message is posted to the text area on the customer's browser. Um, so right now we've got video and uh, chat running at the same time. So this is kind of the two parts of the omni-channel solution here is, is video and chat we have up and running. And we can also add co-browse to the, to the same call if we want to by um, initiating the expert assist. And again, they'll be prompted for that. Um, so you can see now we have, we have uh, text-based chat, we have co-browse, and we have voice and video um, all kicked off to the same contact center agent from uh, a browser. And that contact center agent, when the call came in, received um, the contextual information about the caller that might help them to assist the caller in uh, why ever they're calling. Uh, so the other thing that can be done with the AD interface is to, uh, to generate application events. 
So you can set the AD interface up to look for certain um, message codes, and if it sees a message with that message code, you can uh, tell your application to do anything you want to. So I've, I've set up a, a listener in here to look for a message that uh, has the first four digits of one, two, three, four, and if it receives a message like that, then to update the color of the, the text area, just to illustrate it. So if the agent uh, sends a message of one, two, three, four, the message is received, and the customer's text area color changed to red. Of course, you'd probably do something a little more valuable with it in a production environment, but uh, to illustrate the points, we updated the color. But it's a good example of using the AED a component for doing behavior, on, on, in this case, on the customer web browser. Okay, so that was kind of a lot in a short period of time, but uh, did anyone get anything out of that or have any questions that that, that uh, yeah. yes? Is it supported on UCCE and UCCX also? It is, yeah, UCCE, UCCX, PCCE. Um, so there is a, uh, there, there's also a, a non-contact center interface. So there's a, uh, a co-browse gadget that can run for an, uh, an agent that's just logged into call manager. And it uses a JTAPI interface to extract the ante of the call and to set up the co-browse session. Okay. And how is it licensed? Because for example, I mean, Java guess you have the rich media licenses. How is this, this license? Uh, so it is, I think it's licensed by user, by concurrent session, I believe, is the, is the license model. Okay. And, and, I mean, you will say that this is the primary solution for a contact center, for example. JavaGuest now supports contact center, but I, I don't see using JavaGuest for contact center if you have this. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know that that's everyone's opinion, but, I mean, the, right, so co-browse, AD data channel, the ability to customize the context that's sent to the call. Um, the video quality is, is highly configurable. There's all kinds of callbacks to adjust for, uh, for degradation in network. Um, so it, it really has a lot more features than Jabber Guest. And is this already in the press list? It is, yeah. It's, um, so it was officially uh, OEM'd a few months ago. And um, I, I believe that this latest version that the CCABU has come out with has got all of the licensing and, and priceless stuff is available. Yeah. What, what version of the contact center do you need? Up on you need uh, so you need to run Finesse 10.5 okay. for the co-browse gadget to work. Just the basic voice and video calling, doesn't matter. It's highly, the SIP interop is done really well, so you can actually interface with you know a lot of different iOS versions of Cube and directly with Call Manager, but for the co-browse stuff, it's um, UCC 10.5. Okay, cool. Well, that's all we've got. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll be around if anyone has any questions. Oh, also, I've got one more thing. I, I made the, the source code for this application available on DevNet. Um, if anyone would like to take a look at it themselves, there's the link, um, if you can see that. You can go on there and you can download the source code and play with it and do whatever you want. It doesn't run because it relies on servers that are on a private network, but you can steal anything you want from it and and use it all you like. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brad and Joe.